Hello everyone. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe you're doing good. I believe you're experiencing the hand of God in your life. And welcome to the fifth and final episode of the series that we are calling Simple Steps to Heaven. And today we will look at the fourth step that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I believe this series has blessed you and uh, God willing uh, I will be coming out with the Hindi version of this. I don't know how much good I will speak in Hindi, but uh, uh, but lot of people they are messaging me personally that kindly make some videos in Hindi. So whatever will be the important series, I will try to do it in Hindi also, so that it can be a blessing to to Hindi community also those who can't understand in uh, English. So without wasting a lot of time, uh, let us pray and start this uh, video. Father God, we come to thy presence in this wonderful time, Master. Lord, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, I give this video, this message into thy hands, Master. Lord, let it be a blessing to your children, Master. Open their spiritual eyes and spiritual understanding, spiritual ears to hear you and understand you, Master. I cancel all the disturbances in the name of Jesus. Lord, give me the strength to deliver this message in the context of your word, Master. Lord, you're doing it, Father. I thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. When we see the word of God, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity and he is not a power or a force but a person. And when we see in the Old Testament, Holy Spirit was given to particular individual for special task. But in the New Testament, every believer is the Holy Spirit has been given. And when we read, see the word of God, the author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. And But I believe this uh, video will not confuse you, but rather it will help you to understand most difficult and complex issues. And uh, this issue, the Holy Spirit has been used by Satan to divide Christians uh, while the ministry of the Spirit is actually to draw Christians together. And... Uh, when we see in the New Testament and the reception of the Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit is never been identified uh, with the repentance, uh, faith and water baptism. All four are quite different and all four are needed. And uh, when we see in the last video, I was trying to show you that baptism is a physical event with a spiritual effect and God has no problem doing that but we as human we have accepting that uh, you know it becomes hard for us uh, for example like uh, we all have cell phone you have cell phone I have cell phone and uh, that same cell phone it can make you happy it can make you very sad it can also make you fall in sin it can tempt you and it can also uplift you spiritually but uh, it is in your hand how to handle that it's just a metal or a plastic it's uh, like you know how the cell phones are but it has a drastic effect on you when we see the the holy communion it is only the bread and the wine but uh, if you take it in a wrong way you can die eating and drinking so and certainly you can fall sick if you take it in a wrong way when you see when Jesus was going to heal the blind man, he spat on the ground and he made, made clay of the spit from the dust and he applied on the, on the eyes. So for God, it is not impossible. For us, it will be looking like, you know, it is a spiritual or physical. But, you know, that is the, the Greek thinking. We are living in Greek thinking that uh, you know there is physical there is spiritual and we think that uh, whatever you do physical has a physical impact what you do spiritual has a spiritual impact but hebrew thinking is everything is spiritual so even where hebrews they have a prayer when they go to lou that lord whatever you are helping me to do thank you for that how many of you do you do pray that when you go to lou but hebrews they do because for them everything is spiritual that's why there is a problem in christians that you know when they say you have to be in ministry you have to leave your job because they think job is something 
physical it's carnal it's not spiritual but it is not biblical that uh, that if a person has to do god's work he has to leave the job it is very important paul says a man who doesn't work you should not give him food you know that's the word of god the problem is that you know we due to lack of understanding the church mostly uh, the the believers the teachers they think that you know if you want to do god's work you have to leave job you can't do job and what they make they make the saints into beggars and uh, that is what is happening today i know people personally who used to earn 25000 per month 40000 per month but somebody said you have to be in full time ministry they immediately left the job and now they are doing god's work what they are doing actually is they are stealing the sheep from other churches and they are just talking about money in the church all the time because because they are they were not taught that even working is a ministry towards god that is a whole different topic one day i will i will uh, do a session on that also but uh, when we see in the new testament uh, there is only two cases where we see that uh, that the people receive the holy spirit without any physical act when we see in the book of acts and and acts 10 one on the day of pentecost and at cornelius house uh, but the normal way of receiving the holy spirit in the new testament was to uh, that hands to be laid on people that we can see when we read uh, acts chapter 8 verses 4 to 25 where the samaritan converts uh, uh, there we can see that uh, there were uh, the hands were laid on them also the when we see acts 19 1 to 6 uh, there we can see about the ephesian disciples uh, there also we can see that the hands were laid to receive the baptism of the spirit uh, but remember that every christian needs to baptism one in water one in spirit so that he is born out of water and out of spirit and uh, but the thing is if you place too much hope on the water baptism you will be disappointed remember that water baptism deals with your past it buries your past it washes the past away it finishes the past and it leaves you clean and empty and that's a very dangerous spiritual condition some of the most miserable christians you will ever meet are clean and empty and jesus also said it is dangerous to be clean and uh, and empty because when we read matthew chapter 12 verses 43 to 45 it says when an evil spirit leaves a person it goes into the desert seeking rest but finding none then it says i will return to the person i came from so it returns and finds its former home empty swept and in order then the spirit finds seven other spirits move evil more evil than itself and they all enter the person and and live there so and so that person is worse off than before that will be the experience of this evil generation so it is very important that once you are you a person is been cleaned up they need to be get filled up. and that is why in the new testament as soon as they were baptized them in water they had laid hands on them and prayed that they might receive the holy spirit so it is very important not just to get the sin out of your life uh, but also to be get filled with the holy spirit uh, if you are just clean and empty that is a very very dangerous position to be in so god in his wisdom says that you need to baptism one to deal with the past and one to deal with the future one to get your life emptied and clean and to other to get it filled too many have been emptied but not filled and there is nothing replaced so that is why it is very very important that uh, we also need the same holy spirit that raised jesus from the dead that comes from pentecost remember it is very clearly known in the word of god that receiving the holy spirit is not the same as repentance now many of the people they are confused and they think that they have received the holy spirit 
when they believed remember there is a work that uh, that holy spirit brings to conviction that is another thing you believe in jesus because holy spirit brings that conviction of sin in your life but remember the uh, the baptism of the holy spirit and uh, and the uh, conviction of the holy spirit is two different thing and many of the christians they have got to confused uh, and uh, and they say that you know the moment you believe in jesus you have received the holy spirit and uh, that you cannot see anywhere in the new testament uh, that anyone receiving the holy spirit not knowing it uh, and there is not a case of anyone receiving the spirit without uh, anyone knowing that it was a definite uh, experience many time when you go to a church or to a meeting you can feel the presence of god and because some people are under a, a wrong impression that because they feel the presence of god that is the holy spirit in them no the baptism of the holy spirit is uh, altogether a uh, a different experience uh, for instance uh, you you got a uh, you got a uh, a flu or you have cold what will happen is that uh, everyone in your family will come to know that you have the flu so same way you people will come to know that do you have the holy spirit or not that is very very important the tragedy is that thousands of people they call themselves as christians today and do not even know that whether they have the holy spirit or not like the apostles and one of the reason that many people that one of the reason the many people are not are uh, like confused in this because they have uh, uh, transferred the word receive from the third person of the trinity back to the second like many people they say that receive jesus Be whereas we believe in jesus and we receive the holy spirit so from the day of the pentecost the preaching was repent believe in jesus be baptized and you will receive the spirit that's what makes a person a christian and if doesn't if any man who doesn't have the spirit of christ he is not of him like when we read romans 8 9 it says but you are not controlled by your sinful nature you are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit of god living in you and remember that those who do not have the spirit of christ living in them do not belong to him at all remember this is the actual test that whether you are accepted by god or not whether you have repented or not whether you have believed or not whether you have been baptized but whether you have received the holy spirit or not remember this is how you know that you belong to god or you can, you are or he thinks he is you are his children because he has given us his spirit uh, and that is the very basis of assurance in the new testament uh, remember you cannot know if a person has been justified or received by god or accepted by him until he gives his spirit that is the seal of god and on the whole transaction like when we read second uh, corinthians chapter 1 verses 21 to 22 here we can see now he who establishes us with you in christ has anointed us in god who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee you know when we read first john 324 it says those who obey god's commandments remain in fellowship with him and he with them and we know he lives in us because the spirit he gives us to live in us so when we read first john 4 13 it says and god has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us when we read john chapter 3 verse 5 john replied i assure you no one can enter the kingdom of god without being born of water and of spirit so it is impossible to say a person belongs to god until that fourth step has been taken 
because god doesn't give his spirit to the world the world cannot receive him only a true believer can receive his spirit that's why that is the proof that you belong to god and that you received his spirit when we read john 14 chapter 16 uh, 14 chapter verse 16 and 17 it says and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate and that's the holy spirit who will never leave you he is the holy spirit who leads into all truth the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you so holy spirit can be in you with you upon you there are three dimensions and that is another whole different topic so you can see that none of the other three steps like repenting believing in jesus and baptism of the water can give you the proof but this one the baptism of the holy spirit can can prove that are you a son and daughter of christ when we see the new testament about uh, the baptism of the holy spirit or the reception of the spirit uh, it is distinguished from repentance uh, many people think uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, repentance and uh, baptism of the holy spirit are one but it is possible beloved that uh, to believe in jesus without receiving the spirits and that's what happened in samaria when we read acts chapter 8 and that's what happened in acts 19 where paul had to ask certain disciples did you receive the spirit when you believed now here is a one question that i would like to ask you that you ask yourself in acts 8 in samaria after philip preached and healed after they heard and saw the gospel the whole city repented it believed and they were baptized into his name but none of them had received the holy spirit now the question is if you ask this question i i guarantee you you that the whole new testament and the topic of holy spirit will be a different to you now my question is how did anyone know that they had received the spirit and uh, the question is uh, that how they know the thing is uh, when we see uh, the new testament there is only one possible answer of it that uh, the reception of the holy spirit or the baptism of the holy spirit was always accompanied with outward evidence uh, remember that uh, it is very clear that somebody has been baptized of the holy spirit i always give a example to the people that uh, if you see a fan you know if a fan is working when the switch is on it is uh, revolving but when you switch off the fan still it's revolving and you don't know is the electricity is there but after some time you'll come to know that the electricity has gone because the fan was revolving without electricity that is the difference like when a evil spirit comes in someone nobody comes to know but when a evil spirit leaves a person everybody comes to know same way when the holy spirit comes in a person everyone comes to know that he or she has been baptized with the holy spirit but when the holy spirit leaves a person no one comes to know remember you may not be able to date that when you have repented first you may not be able to date when you believed in jesus first uh, either like when you said a, a salvation prayer a sinner's prayer that day you can write but the moment you start to believe in jesus you know the first step you cannot date that uh, but uh, you can certainly will be able to date when you were baptized in water and you will certainly will be able to date when you receive the holy spirit because the baptism in water and in the spirit are both so definite that you possibly couldn't uh, know it like you know it it is impossible that you will not come to understand or know it that you have been baptized uh, remember that it never happened to a person in their water baptism 
Sometimes people receive the Holy Spirit before baptism, like when we see in the New Testament, we see in the case of Cornelius. More often, more often it happened after their baptism as with most of the others. But never it happened that anyone received the Holy Spirit during baptism. And uh, so it is very, very important that we need to give our new brothers and sisters the full gospel. We should be giving them the half of the message. This all four things is very important. And when we lead someone to Christ, but before that, if you are short of one of this, you need to pray to the Lord that I also want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, it is very important that we give them the complete gospel when we read acts chapter 4 verse 31 there we can see it says uh, that they were filled with the holy spirit uh, so so uh, in acts 4 31 it says after this prayer the meet the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the holy spirit and they preached the word of god with boldness uh, so how will you know that someone has been filled uh, for example, how will you know that your petrol tank has been filled? How will you know that your glass of water is filled? How will you know that uh, that any bucket has been filled? It will overflow. So you know a person when he overflows uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's why that uh, Jesus said uh, that what comes out of your mouth that is important. When we read Luke chapter 6, 45, it says, A good person produces good things from the treasures of good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flow from what is in your heart, because the heart, when it is full of something, that where it comes out. Uh, Remember, if there is uh, your heart is full of dirt, it that dirt will come out of your mouth. If your heart is full of unclean thing, it will come out of your mouth. If your heart is full of fun, you will laugh. If it is full of anger, you will you you will curse. If it is full of sorrow, you will be you will be wailing, you will be howling, you will be crying louder. And if its mouth is full of the Holy Spirit, it will spe it will overflow. Remember that it was God who gave the first language at the Tower of Babel to separate men and women so they couldn't get on together and without him. And on the day of Pentecost, he gave different languages to bring people together again. And since God knows every language, it is not surprising when he fills you up and you find yourself speaking in a language that you have not learned at all. And remember, it is the only gift of the Holy Spirit that helps you and all the other gifts are for someone else. But this gift is only to help you to yourself to edify yourself. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4, it says, A person who speaks in tongues is edifies personally but one who speaks the word of prophecy and uh, strengthens the entire church. When Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. Many quote Paul in a negative way, but here Paul itself is saying, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any one of you. The another translation of tongue will be a language. You know, it's language. It's actually a language. So when you speak in, 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 in you're speaking in tongues, actually you're speaking in languages. And that is one of the secret of, uh, of Paul that how he could uh, go through stoning, whipping, shipwrecks, uh, how he was able to, ma he managed to go through all those things because he was speaking in tongues. Uh, remember, it is very, very important, beloved, to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, Jesus would never have said, it is better for me to go. 
remember because what the same holy spirit who was with jesus in jesus is uh, residing in me and you if you are filled with the holy spirit that's why i always say that i know that who i am because the one who is in me is greater than this world that's why i'm not scared of people that's why i don't care what people say i know who i am in christ jesus remember when you have the same holy spirit people will able to see that uh, but uh, the what is the important thing is when we see in the old testament a question comes that how they received the holy spirit uh, and what happened when they received the holy spirit uh, first thing the most important thing is the answer is they sought that gift uh, remember that uh, it is very important that you pray and ask for the holy spirit i remember when i got baptized in the water now i knew that my next step is to i need to receive the holy spirit now what i will be doing is every day after coming from school from 4 to 5 i will go to a room and i will close the room i will read the bible i will sing songs and i will worship god and i think in 3 months uh, god baptized me in his holy spirit and while worshiping in a normal language he gave me an unknown tongues but when we read first corinthians 14 18 you know i read in the verse 19 it says but uh, paul was saying i thank god that i speak in tongues more than any of you but in a church meeting i would rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10000 words in an unknown language so many of you you are listening to me from quite a long time but you many even some has has asked me also that do you have the gift of tongues uh, and yes i do but as paul said that i would rather speak five understandable words to help other than 10000 words in an unknown language i can speak in tongues to in front of you and uh, you know but the thing is there is something called things to be done in your privacy in the private you know these tongues uh, it i am not against it uh, but when we are together and somebody doesn't understand that you need an interpretation always there if you're speaking in a church but what has happened is that uh, that when you go to certain churches there are people they will be speaking in tongues nobody to interpret and you know pe- there is chaos people don't know what is happening there is a uh, confusion so that is why the paul says that you know he speaks in tongues more than anyone but he is not speaking in church when i am in front of you i am using this time to communicate with you in a language that every one of you can understand i can also speak remember the problem with indians are a problem with very pa- different pastors are they copy if what somebody is doing in africa what someone is doing in america they don't go and read the word of god you know but the, the i can show you so many pastors those who know the word of god when they come on live or in the videos they will share the message they are not speaking in tongues to portray that you know they are holy they speak in tongues that means they are special remember no you can also have the same gift all you need to pray for it if you sought the gift then only god will give you the problem is pastors don't know you know and that's the reason the 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 sheep of the church they don't know when we read luke chapter 11 verse 13 it says uh, uh, that simply say how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who go on asking remember when we read luke chapter 3 verses 21 and 22 there we can see that jesus himself did not receive the holy spirit power until he prayed for it it says one day luke chapter 3 verses 21 to 22 it says one day when the crowd were being baptized jesus himself was baptized as he was praying the heaven opened as he was praying the heaven opened and the holy spirit in bodily form descended on him like a dove and a voice from heaven said you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy so remember as he was so he was praying likewise before the day of the pentecost before his uh, jesus ascension and pentecost they were asking and they were praying and in that were 120 people 
there was even the mother of Jesus Mary that means uh, even Mary who was the mother of Jesus spoke in tongues it's not only the apostles they were all together 120 people so remember that even Mary the mother of Jesus spoke in tongues and uh, and that is why time and again when we see Peter and John when they came to Samaria and uh, the people were repented they baptized uh, then they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit uh, when Paul was at Ephesus he prayed that they might receive the Holy Spirit so prayer is the one way of seeking many times you will think uh, that I have prayed for one month two months three months uh, but uh, I didn't receive that will come to next point uh, in some time that uh, that why have you not received uh, but uh, but the thing is you need to keep on asking I remember that uh, before going to Mauritius for ministry uh, the Lord said to me that uh, you know your wife needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost when we got married she was not having the gift of the uh, Holy Spirit yes she was repenting she was believing she was been baptized in water and we prayed we prayed for uh, for we fasted for seven days and the uh, first day went by second day third day fourth day fifth day sixth day and seventh day the last hour we prayed we prayed she was asking for it and then who she got the baptism of the holy spirit and she spoke in tongues and she was been blessed by spiritual gifts also at the same time that is very very important and after that when we went to Mauritius that it was a different uh, experience so God knew that you know if you want to do greater exploits you need the gift of the Holy Spirit it is very very important if you are not speaking in tongues uh, you are just missing one of the best experience you can have in a Christian life you have no idea that what you are missing in your life uh, that is why you have to ask I remember one of the sister uh, she's staying in um, Israel she is working in a house and she said I want the gift of the Holy Spirit I said okay and I then sent her an audio how to receive the Holy Spirit not just you have to you have to just uh, like you know you need somebody to lay hands uh, that is one of the way but even God can give the Holy Spirit without laying of hands uh, so I said you just worship God now many of you will ask how should we receive uh, we don't have anyone to go to so all you have to do is you worship God in your language in your Hindi English Malayalam Tamil whatever language you know you worship God but you need to have the desire remember that's why you know you the you are not receiving the Holy Spirit because God knows that you are not serious about it he knows your motive so how I tell people if they are they are not close to me I cannot lay my hand I will say you worship God in words you worship God in words and you just speak and you sing and you say to the Lord Lord I want to worship you in spirit and truth fill me with your baptism and with that anticipation when you worship you will not know that automatically the Holy Spirit will give you the utterance and you will be baptized that is one of the way that I have seen in my ministry that lot of people whom I guided like that they were filled with the Holy Spirit where they were in their bedrooms in their prayer rooms so you need to know that uh, that first thing what they these people were in the word of God were expecting they were praying they were sorting the Lord for the Holy Spirit second they will lay the hands on the people and that is a intensive uh, form of prayer like when you meet a person when you stand with a person and you're talking but you're not using your hands sometimes you put your hands on a person to communicate that you concern for that person so like when we read uh, numbers chapter 11 verses 16 to 25 uh, there also we can see that Moses laid hands on 70 elders and they received the Holy Spirit and they prophesied so this was a normal way so the thing is even it was so normal that when we read Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 2 the author doesn't say author doesn't say the baptism of the Holy Spirit it just say there that uh, that the laying of the hands that means that the early church knew if someone is saying that laying of the hands uh, that means the that you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit uh, remember 
that the the thing is uh, that the today's church need to do this more the thing is the church focuses on baptism more and that is what is happening in many churches the children are not ready but uh, the the pastor's forces for the someone to be baptized why because uh, he is going to 12th uh, or maybe he is going to graduation maybe he or she is going out of city so you know they will not have time to get baptized that is absolute wrong and i will say it's a heresy you know it is not biblical that you force someone or be on your own intellectual mind that you know we need to baptize him because so and so remember what is more important is that you you groom up your children to live a life of repentance believing in jesus and when that person that boy and a girl when that person is ready then you baptize when he knows what it is that it is the the end of his life it is not he but now christ lives in him now he has been dead he has been died with christ buried with christ he will raise up with christ and he will be a new creation that is very very important so it is very important that church needs to emphasize on the baptism of the holy spirit and the best time to do is that like in the on the early church in the beginning of the christian life and that is the best time to do because the more it delays it becomes very hard for the person to receive it because when he was emptied he should have been filled but all the filth of the world the sin and unrepenting confess sins because of that you know it becomes lot of hindrance for him and he gets lot of far more away i remember one of my friend she is she is in nagpur i won't say the name and uh, when i was in college i will be speaking in tongues i will call on phone we will pray i will speak in tongues and pray and she will be saying i wish i could also i said if you desire for it you will receive it and after some days there was a conference about holy spirit and she was filled with the holy spirit there and i said now the important thing is now you need to pray you need to speak in tongues you need to pray in tongues so that you can grow and after 3 months i said to her are you speaking in tongues and she said oh time nahi milta like you know i don't have time so that is one of the reason that you know the holy spirit you don't use it god knows that you know when you have a desire is filling you but more people they don't have the the desire to grow and they have no idea that what holy spirit can do for you if my wife and i the secret of my life is uh, we speak in tongues and we don't speak in tongues for 5 minutes 10 minutes for hours uh, there are men of god god is using them because they're speaking in tongues to 4 hours 6 hours a day because uh, that is the work of the holy spirit you know you have no idea that you carry a more powerful than an atomic bomb inside you and it is all up to you that how you use it that's why it says that my people perishes due to lack of knowledge to people don't have its knowledge they don't have time for it they are so busy making their house their bungalows their cars their loans and you know they miss the point that why they are on this earth so now the next question comes uh, that why somebody has not received the holy spirit even after praying for a long time even the hands have been laid off the simple reason might be they have not fully repented you know they said forgive all my sins khatam that's not the way you know you have to confess every sin that you have done the holy spirit brings in rep- uh, in remembrance so you need to have a repenting life secondly they may, might not have acted in faith towards the lord so that you need to check that where you have fell down and where you have failed the third might be that they have not been baptized in the name of the father son and the holy spirit they might have been done a sprinkle baptism a child baptism but they are not been baptized as the word of god demands the baptism in immersion baptism so if all these three things uh, when we check and they are saying no we are doing that uh, but there can be one more reason that uh, are those expecting what they have to be expecting like uh, many people they don't understand that how to receive the holy spirit uh, remember a gift has to be received uh, 
and until you speak you will not receive it like people will keep their mouth shut and expecting the holy spirit to speak through them that's not going to happen on the day of pentecost it says they were all filled with the holy spirit and they began to speak so that's why i, I always tell you worship god in your own language and you will not know that when the uh, when the moment you will speak in unknown language so the it says that on the day of pentecost he began to speak through them it doesn't say like that it says uh, they began to speak uh, remember you cannot uh, heal anyone until and unless you go and pray for someone you cannot uh, you cannot play a play an instrument until and unless you, you use your hands and legs uh, and that's why you will not know what you got until and unless you use it so you when you expecting to receive the holy spirit what you are asking for it you need to ask the lord you need to speak out it that doesn't mean you speak anything rubbish that it is the tongues that is not the way you need to speak and you need to worship god you need to keep on singing and automatically the holy spirit will give you the utterance when peter was not knowing to walk on water you know but he jumped having faith and he saw that so when you when in faith you are speaking in a language you know and you are expecting lord to fill you and baptize you you that that will be there i remember that once i was uh, uh, in uh, dehradun i was in a church uh, and um, i took a special class on holy spirit uh, and uh, after the church there was the lunch and uh, there was a special announcement that i felt in my spirit that to take a session on the holy spirit and i remember that people after having heavy lunch you know they were feeling sleepy and all so while i was sharing the word i saw people over yawning and they were like feeling sleepy so i felt in my spirit to make them stand up and uh, and you know sing a song and uh, i i asked them all to stand because you know it doesn't look for a good for a preacher you know he's preaching everybody sleeping and uh, and they all stood up and they were not expecting anything to happen and uh, it is still the testimony and uh, i came after that uh, no i came to know after what happened is that uh, when we started to sing i i came down and i kept my hand on a person and as i kept because he was already speaking he was singing the song i kept my hand on him and immediately that person he was like you know filled with the holy ghost and he was like jumping and he went from one place to another and the church they all became like shocked you know later i came to know that this person is a believer coming to church taking holy communion for 13 years and so many pastors they kept the hand on them to be baptized in the holy ghost he never got and this was the first time i kept and i'm not taking the glory but what i'm saying that he was already speaking and uh, it was easier for the holy spirit to give utterance during that time so you need to know that what you are expecting but the problem is uh, but the problem is uh, you need to take a step uh, but the prop there is another problem that there are fear that has been built up by the the spiritual leaders like a pastor doesn't know to speak in tongues so he is not baptized he will preach in a negative way there many people have the fear that they might lose control there are fear what other people's will think but remember i tell you you speak in tongues when you're filled with the holy ghost you don't have to worry remember a spiritual blind person will not been able to understand what is happening but a person who is uh, who knows the who has the spiritual understanding knows Know that this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so there are uh, there because people who are teaching false gospel. You know there are people who are uh, who have false teaching, and some are teaching that if you speak in tongues, uh, it is the tongues that is been given by the Satan. And but remember, those who are teaching such things, uh, they are very near to the unforgivable sin. Uh, which is not been committed by the people outside the church but within the church remember if you call the work of the holy spirit the work of satan you need to be very careful because everything will be forgiven but anything you say against the holy spirit will not be 
forgiven remember that some people because of these teachings you know people get scared and uh, but you need to know that you need to trust on jesus uh, and you don't be feeling fearful when you ask for the holy spirit because jesus said in luke chapter 11 verses 11 to 13 it says uh, your fathers if your children ask for a fish do you give them a snake instead or if they ask for an egg do you give them a scorpion of course not so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him so don't ever be afraid that the father will give you the wrong thing the thing is uh, you the only people who will get the 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 languages from satan or the the impartation from satan are the ones uh, who are who were de dealing in occult uh, who were uh, who were involved in occult uh, and they have not repented of it they have not believing just by that they are praying and that they, the devil has a chance upon them then they will be baptized uh, in the under the language of satan but if you are repented you are having a repenting life you believe in jesus you are baptized in the name of the father son and the holy spirit devil has no authority over your life and the second false teaching that is been uh, happening today that they are seeing that these are the things uh, uh, for the old for the first century believers for the apostles and they have died out that is utter nonsense remember these gifts never died out uh, and it is so amazing to see that people who know their bible so well don't know it or know it at all remember when we read uh, uh, john chapter 16 verse uh, 7 it says uh, but in fact it is bet best for you that i go away because if i don't the advocate the holy spirit won't come and if i do go away then i will send him to him Rem remember if the blood of jesus is still cleansing us from the sin then how come the other other parts other steps are not working it is utter foolishness remember that uh, many people they think that uh, some things were for the first century not for us uh, remember you need to be careful with such people you need to ask the lord you cannot go outside the word of god his word of god is settled in heaven it is same yesterday today and forever that means uh, that word of God, if it's saying that Jesus said they will speak in tongues, uh, that means you will speak in tongues. So do not allow foolish people to fool you with their foolish gospel. That's what I will say. Be very, very careful. Remember when we read John chapter 1 Corinthians verse 12 to 31. Remember it is commanded over there to covet the gift of the spirit remember that is the only form of coveting that is allowed for christians that you need to covet the gifts of the spirit remember there are many uh, benefits if you speak in different languages and tongues but uh, but uh, i will just share some of them because i don't have too much time remember first corinthians chapter 14 verses 18 to 19 when we when we had read it says uh, that i thank god that i speak in tongues uh, more than any one of you that was paul so many who are quoting the scriptures uh, verses of paul who is uh, who and saying that the tongues have gone here paul itself is saying I, i'm speaking in tongues uh, remember the first thing you need to know that when you speak in tongues when you pray in tongues uh, remember that uh, you are doing a spiritual edification when we read first corinthians 14 4 it says he who speaks in tongues edifies himself but he who prophesies edifies the church remember speaking in tongues isn't mental edification it is spiritual edification when we read first corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 there we can see it's written for he who speak in tongues does not speak to men but to god and for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mystery so second point we can see that praying in tongues uh, allows you to speak directly 
to God. When we read Acts chapter 2 verse 4, there we can see it's written, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance. So the third point it is that praying in tongues keep you in tune with the Holy Spirit. When we read Romans chapter 8 verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Remember the fourth point you will know that the benefit of speaking in tongues is praying in tongues allows you to pray even when you don't know what to pray. Remember, as I said earlier, the Holy Spirit is not just a power. He is a person. He is a comforter to lead and guide. Unlike the Father and the Son, He is not a king and does not rule with absolute authority. But He can be grieved. When we read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, it says, And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, He has been identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. He can be quenched. When we read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 13, 19, it says, Do not quench the Spirit. He can also be resisted. Acts chapter 7 verse 51, it says, You stubborn people, you are heathen at heart and deaf to the truth. Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's what your ancestors did and so do you. So you need to know that you know Holy, you can even resist the Holy Spirit. Remember, it is very very important that you need to know that uh, how what Holy Spirit works that is altogether a different topic and I don't want to get into it uh, but remember that uh, the in the conclusion I can only say that the Spirit will be only given to those who want to receive Him remember it is important that you should be willing if you don't want it God will not force it on you but uh, what an incredible privilege we have to have the spirit of living God takes up uh, residence uh, within us. Uh, but remember, the gift of the spirit uh, should enable you to have the fruit of the spirit. Uh, when we read in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23, there the Apostle Paul lists uh, the, the benefit of listening to the Holy Spirit. It says, but the spirit, fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Remember the word fruit here comes from a Greek word that means karpos, uh, which means the result, the benefit uh, of speaking in tongues. Uh, remember that if you speak in tongues, you are praying in tongues, uh, it often works as a remedy, it often works as a solution when you are going through problems uh, and struggles. Uh, remember, when you have the fruit of the spirit of love, uh, remember that your doubt and worries, uh, uncertainties will, will disappear. When you have the, the fruit of joy, remember you there will be no discouragement devil will be able to bring in your life uh, if you have the peace of god in your life uh, remember all your he hidden wounds uh, and will be healed and will be replaced by his peace uh, remember if you have his patience the fruit of the patience in you remember you will be able to wait for god's time you will be able for to wait for the right person god has chosen for you remember if you have the fruit of goodness in you he will free you from idleness uh, and laziness uh, remember if you have the fruit of kindness in you he will remove that jealousy and the spirit of envy from your life uh, if you have the fruit of faithfulness in you he will help you not to compromise with this world or the sinful nature of this world. If you have the fruit of meekness in you, he will never allow uh, the devil to develop pride in your life. And if you have uh, the self-control, the fruit of the self-control in you, 
remember that will bring the drastic change in your character that you will not be like always ready to fight you will have self control you will show the fruit of self control in all the areas of your life when people speak ill of you they, these are all the like big big sermons on one topic but i'm giving you in a smaller way that you can understand that so when we read uh, uh, john chapter 15 verse 5 it says uh, yes i am the vine you are the branches those who remain in me and i in them will produce much fruit far apart from me you can do nothing you have to remain in jesus uh, then only you will be able to bear more fruit remember in the end of the judgment in the when you stand before jesus it's not your gift uh, it is the fruit that will determine your destiny on that day many will come and say i have prophesied in your name i have healed in your name i have did the, this uh, cast out demons in your name and jesus will say i do not know you so remember the purpose of gift uh, is to build up god's body and we need gifts now to build up one another but when christ returns we will no longer have the need of the gifts uh, whereas the uh, fruit reveals god's character in each one of us uh, gift uh, reveal gifts reveal christ character in us especially corporately you know the fruit of the spirit shows what god can do in us and the gift of the spirit shows what god can do through us in both the cases it's god's work and he should get the glory not like the other people who are using the god's gift to manipulate to show people that you know they have the gift of prophecy they have the gift of healing and miracle remember god should be glorified by the gifts you have not that portray that you are something that's what is happening today in india in a, abroad everywhere that people using the gifts uh, and they have no problem people touching their feet following for falling on their feet and they are treating them like kings uh, remember a true servant of god will be humble in his heart and whatever he does will bring glory to christ he will not take all the glory that is very very important that you should be able to say he must increase i must uh, decrease uh, i believe this series has uh, blessed you i know because of this uh, series uh, many of you will decide to be get baptized in the water in the name of the father son and holy spirit many of you will ask your leaders uh, and you will sort the gift of the holy spirit uh, some of me some of you even start to have a repenting life uh, but what is important is to do what the word of god says i know so many people still they are still living in the past they don't want to offend someone they don't want to offend uh, their denomination but remember what is important is to that to, to do what the word of god says uh, and uh, it is important beloved that you repent and believe in jesus christ uh, no one apart from jesus christ uh, but only jesus christ uh, and be baptized in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and complete your race like jesus like apostle paul and the other disciples of jesus let us pray father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master we come to your throne of grace lord i give this message into thy hand lord lord you have uh, given your grace and mercy to me lord that i should be able i would have been able to share the message in the context master and lord uh, everyone who have gone through this series completely give them the grace and mercy that they will put it in action in their life master and they will make the best out of this messages uh, and through their life through their character people will see the fruit of the holy spirit master everyone who is not living a repenting life who is not living a life believing in jesus christ they are not obedient to the word of god master lord i decree and declare an encounter of god upon their life master that they might see the word and be obedient to your word master and lord all those who are seeking the baptism of the holy spirit lord fill them with your baptism of the holy spirit fill them with your gifts master fill them with your with your uh, gifts of the holy spirit master that they can do more exploits uh, for your kingdom lord you're doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray
Amen, amen, amen. Once again, I believe this uh, series has blessed you. And uh, God willing, I'll come with Hindi version of it. And uh, it is very tiring. That's It took me approximately four days to prepare this message. It's a long message, but I want that people to get it in the, in the context. And I believe that a lot of uh, queries, a lot of questions have already covered in this. And, uh, and uh, go on. And when you bring somebody in the Lord, you know, use this uh, way to bring them to Christ so that uh, you will not, uh, you know, uh, miss anything and you will not give the half message or one fourth message, but complete message to them and share it with your friends and loved ones. And if you're using my app, uh, if you're using Android phone or an uh, Apple phone, download our app. App name is Evans Francis. And if the Lord leads you, become a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud of our small ministry. It's all because of people like you who pray and stand with our ministry that uh, we are able to sustain and we are able to do what we are doing. And it's because you stand with us, we are able to uh, put more efforts, more time in the, because that's the reason I'm uh, giving you the spiritual food because uh, I know that God has called me for that. And thank you all for standing with us. And if you are not standing with us, I'll encourage you to stand with us so that we can do more for the kingdom of God. And uh, may God bless you. May his face shine upon you. Stay blessed. Shalom.